It's recording. Greetings, Claymont families. Thank you so much for joining Team Claymont. We are here to uh, just review what has happened so far to do our mid-year review. As we move through this program, if you have questions individually about your child or what is happening, we encourage you to reach out to your child's teacher or members of our team. This um, presentation we're doing tonight is just for informational purposes. So again, families, welcome. What we have in store for you, we have some information on what's happening school-wide in Title I. We also are going to look at academics and behaviors and the various supports that are available. So good day, my name is Tammy Stewart and I am the principal here at Claymont Elementary. And we want you to know at the end of the day, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of parents. So we so appreciate the collaboration between Claymont Elementary and you all, and we, we encourage you to continue. So some school updates. We're gonna meet the admin team as we go through the presentation tonight. As you know, as parents of students at Claymont, we have a lot of activities that are happening that will continue to happen. So we continue to encourage you to be involved. So what does a day look like at Claymont? At 8.35, we let in our walkers and bus riders for breakfast. Then at 8.40, all others enter for breakfast and or homeroom. Our car riders have a grab and go breakfast. Um, in grades three to five that they eat in their classrooms. So we thank you all for your patience through our car rider line. Morning announcements start at 8.55. Please remember it is very important that your child comes to school on time. We start instruction at nine o'clock. So students arriving after that time are missing key instruction. We know things may happen, but we do ask that you make an effort to get your child to school on time. From about nine to 3.30 p.m., we are doing specials. We have math, ELA, science, and social studies, of course, lunch and recess. And then our students have opportunities throughout the day for small group. We also have various level of support. As you all know, we offer special education services, counseling, small group. So there is a lot happening in a day for your child and for our staff. Celebrations. Uh, we have a lot of celebrations that we're able to talk about. We were excited to be a part of the Claymont 12 70th anniversary. Um, please feel free to go to these websites and learn a little more if you missed our presentation in September. We raised funds for Light Up the Night and Breast Cancer Awareness. We also stuffed the bus. Uh, we were awarded some grants, our spe special population, which is our multi-language learners. We received a grant for them. And we were also recognized by the Delaware PBIS um, program entering into phase two. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about behaviors. And as you all know, we celebrate various months from Hispanic Heritage Month to Music History Month now. So please feel free to ask your child, what was on the announcements this morning? We love to have you engaged. And I will now turn it over to Ms. Schamberger. Hi, everybody. My name is Imani Schamberger. I'm the family liaison here at Claymont Elementary. This is our first time having a family liaison here at Claymont. Um, my job is really to just help bring relationships between the parents, staff, students, uh, faculty, the community, everybody in the community, um, getting them to all feel involved and build those relationships with the building. Um, I'm also here to help parents get more knowledge about different things. We have a lot of workshops that we do, um, try to get parents to come in and help out during the class times or, you know, with different events that we have. Um, we're trying to initiate businesses to come and feel welcome. Um, we're going through Title I, so we're a Title I school building, which means that we have a program that supports low-income students and families. Uh, we get federal money that assists with our students, you know, support academically and behaviorally. Um, some workshops that we've had so far is we've uh, done Walking for the Cure, we did Breast Cancer Awareness, we raised money for that. Um, we did a class course on how to help your child with their emotions, and we did a healthy eating workshop already as well. We have a lot of partnerships that we've gained this year from nothing but bunt cakes all the way down to Claymont Fire Station, Double Dipper Ice Cream, and we work a lot with our Claymont PTA, who our president is Melissa Stopman. Um, our budget uh, for Title I really goes towards our academic tutors, um, a conference that some of our staff were able to go to this year, which was amazing. I was there for myself. Um, a lot of after-school after programs for teachers to be able to get uh, paid for after-school hours that they work and for substitutes and other curriculum like bookworms and imagine learning. Um, 
upcoming events that we have going on right now we are selling socks from rock your socks they're sold at each lunch on a couple of days during the week for three dollars at each lunch kindergarten and first grade will see receive order forms uh, we're also doing great streams clean great schools clean streams um which is just a pledge to say that we're going to keep our environment safe Um, right now, upcoming, we have fifth grade uh, is going to have a life after elementary school. We're going to have some average students come over and have fifth grade talk about what that's going to look like going into middle school. We also have another workshop coming up in May on May 18th at 530. Uh, Mr. Eric Town is going to be our presenter talking about internet safety and social media with our students. Thank you guys for listening. Hi, I'm Chris Romano. I'm one of the assistant principals here at Claymont. I just want to give you a brief overview of uh, our assessment calendar that's coming up. So um, we take the NWEA, uh, which is our, we call it Map Growth. Um, it's a computer adaptive test that adjusts based on responses. So if a student answers something correctly or answers the question correctly, questions continue to get harder. If they answer it incorrectly, questions get a little easier. So it determines and informs us of uh, what students know and how they're growing. Um, students take that assessment or those assessments three times a year, um, and it really helps inform our instruction and identifies areas that students could use extra support with. So just talking about our map growth, um, as you can see, we've taken our fall assessment, we've taken our winter. Um, the column there at the back or at the, at the end, all the way right, actually shows what our students are doing in terms of our growth. with math and here is our reading growth um, and we look at this uh, second to last column the spring writ average we look at that as the opportunity column okay so we're really looking forward to seeing uh, what our students and staff uh, can do here in uh, late spring so I have some assessments coming up um, like I said NWEA which is our math test um, students will be taking that in May, um, as well as the third through fifth graders will be taking a smarter balanced assessments, which begin in late April. So we're about five weeks out. So families may ask themselves, how can I help my child prepare? So we just ask that you uh, get them to bed a little early the night before, um, have them wake up them, wake them up pretty early. Um, give them some breakfast. We are still serving breakfast um, here at school, so get them here a little early if they need to be fed. Uh, remind your child to uh, take their time and talk the test up. Ask them what their goal is, because each and every one of our teachers are working on goals with their students. Give them a pep talk to encourage them to do their best. Good evening, Dr. Avery Sherrod, proud Claymont alumni and current Dean of Students. Um, we're going to go over some behavioral data as well as our PBIS program. As you can see, we have positive behavior intervention and supports. Uh, the first thing that we rely on is our class compliments. Through this, students in classrooms are able to be rewarded and they're able to earn uh, pajama days, they're able to earn pizza, and they're also able to earn extra recess for having our expectations being met. Our expectations are being respectful, responsible, cooperative, and safe. Um, also, students, we have we have spirit days. We try to have at least four, four spirit days a year, uh, primarily because it increases the student attendance and engagement. Also, here at Claymont Elementary, we have our own currency. It's called Cougar Cash. Using Cougar Cash, students are able to buy into our prize cart and also our monthly incentives. If you look at the pictures, you'll see our last incentive for the month of February was a pie, pie admin day. Um, we also had painting with a twist. In the fall, we've had uh, the Cougar Olympics where they participated in different activities. Taking a look at our discipline, as you can see, over 95% of our students have not received a referral this year. We, uh, we attribute that to our high instruction level and also our high engagement. Uh, for those 30 students who have received a referral, we're working with film, we have check-in, check-out. We also have a hugs program where we're able to really embrace the students and come from a more restorative approach so that we don't have to have a referral for behavior. Hello, I'm Ed Burks. I'm the other Dean of Students here. Just a little bit about restorative practices and what and how we use them 
in Claymont Elementary, along with the whole Brandywine School District. Uh, restorative practice promote values and principles that use inclusive collaborative practices for being in a community. So we look at less about uh, consequencing students as to having them restore and find out why the problem happened. Getting them together to talk about it, find out their differences and how they can come together to prevent those same problems from happening in the future is very big in restorative practices. We try to use this as much as possible to promote a safe and healthy environment at Claymont Elementary. I'm Dana Jackson, one of our assistant principals here at Claymont. How are you? Good. Um, so I'm here to talk about supports. Um, here at Claymont, learning and supports go hand in hand. Our, our supports match students' needs and are data-driven. So how we communicate our needs for supports, we have a team called MTSS who weekly review data um, and problem solve for teachers, students, and families. We have academic and math instructors who review data and provide services based on need, parent key teacher conferences, we have annual school climate surveys where we get teacher um, and student and parent feedback. Our family liaison provides parent surveys for us. Teachers um, regularly let us know when they are concerned about a student and also again attendance records. So our attendance supports, these are specialized, more specialized and more individualized as unexcused absences occur. Around three to six absences, you'll definitely hear a phone call from us, get an email from a teacher. Perhaps you'll get attendance notice from the office. These notices and efforts to solve the problem for attendance increase over time. You'll then see an additional parent conference as um, absences increase and will develop once it gets more and in, um, increasing a student attendance improvement plan. After that, we do seek um, other counseling services and other legal services if necessary. Again, the, what's best for students is absolute um, engagement and attendance. Um, our support services, as far as our social workers and counseling, we definitely engage to solve problems before they become um, real true problems for students. Prevention as, is key. As Ms. Jackson said, please note that those are automated letters. And while I enjoy reading the emails, if you would just reach out to Ms. Sanchez in the front office, if you have notes that are missing, um, she will be able to assist you. So those letters automatically say Ms. Stewart on there because I am the building principal. But if you would like to check in on absences to see whether notes have been received, please check in with uh, Ms. Sanchez. As you heard from our deans of students, PBIS and positive behavior is huge here at Claymont. Um, we use incentives for good behavior and expected behavior uh, through Cougar Cash, cashing out for um, little fun items or activities. Student voice, we have student council represented at our teacher meetings to hear their student voice and collaboration that increases positive behavior and it gets our peer um, involvement. Um, going. We have a whole PBS calendar. We talked about spirit days, neon day, couch potato day, Disney day, anything fun. That's who we are. We have community slides and encourage equity and engagement. Um, recently, we just celebrated Black History Month. We are coming into Women's History Month, music appreciation. In the past, we've had Hispanic Latino Month and Asian Pacific Islander Month. We are very proud of the representation that we um, reflect for our community. And of course, incentive activities as our deans talked about, pie in the face was my favorite personally. So MTSS is our team of professionals here who look at data and again, make sure that we have supports that match our students' needs. Okay, so for behavior supports, um, you see a long list in front of us. I won't read every one, but I want you to know that they are within tiers, tier one being provided to all students, tier two being predominantly small groups based on groups of students and what they need, tier three being more individualized where we create plans specific for students and um, families. In tier one, I just want to just highlight that our counselors provide social emotional education development 
Uh, that involves all of our PBS activities. Tier two would be small groups like lunch bunches. We teach coping skills, small counseling services, girl talk club, gentlemen's club. Tier three would be attendance conferences, independent plans, um, meal provisions, assistance from our social worker team. Our academic supports, uh, mostly reading and math supports. It also is a tier one to three system. Tier one being provided to all students, small groups, visual aids, um, reward for a job well done, speech therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy can actually be tier one or all tiers. Tier two would be more specialized based on data. If a student needs help in a particular subject area, we actually build groups around that subject area. For example, if they needed help with vocabulary, they would be in just a group to build vocabulary for students. Same thing goes with math. For tier three, those would be our IEPs, individual education programs and more individualized supports. So families, at this time, uh, we appreciate you taking time to either be here with us or reviewing this video. Again, if you have very specific questions about your child, we encourage you to reach out to us. Um, or if you have a general question, we wanna make sure that we keep the lines of communication open. As you know, you'll continue to receive your weekly regroup message that has a lot of information in there along with an email that you can read on your own. Um, we will stop recording now and see if there are any questions. Again, families, thank you for joining us.